15 minute ass whooping part five number five episode five ass whooping shit okay this one's about what now it's about when you know that you need to start you know you're you're sick of where you're at but you're you're sitting there saying i just don't know how to start i don't know where to go ain't this the same shit as the motivation inspiration no why not? i i think it does tie in because you started talking about some things in that one that i was thinking about for this one oh, clock starting three two one okay go ahead. but I think a lot of times people take ignorance and use it as a cop out. And I just think in this day and age, there's no there's no reason in the world that you can claim that you don't know how to do something. Because No, you can do that. Like what? Do you know how to build a gym? Oh, I could <laughs> No, you don't. I don't know how to build a gym, but I I did I did other stuff by myself. <laughs> There's a lot. No, listen, listen. Okay? I'm listening. There's a lot of, there's a ton of, nobody knows it the fuck all. Okay? Right. There's a lot of shit you can say you don't know how to do, and mm -hmm. it's valid. Yes. All I'm going to ask is you put the word yet after that bullshit ass statement. And that's what I mean. That's what I'm trying to say. Because you can't say, I'm, not, I'm just not going to, well, I guess I'm just stuck like this because I don't really know what to do. So I'm just going to go get some Ozempic shots and call it a day. That's because I just don't know how to do it. I just, I can't afford it. I don't know how to do it. But at the same time, it's like, well, you have a billion resources at your fingertips that could help you figure out how to do it. But you got to know what you're looking for, why you want it, who you are, who you want to become, be willing to let go of who you are to become who you want to become. Mm -hmm. And some of those resources are, are traps, mm -hmm. right? Like, 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 unfortunately, some healthcare providers... <sighs> You know, your PCP will fucking tell you to take that Ozempic. Yeah. But what I was going to say, remind me of was, was this, uh, this wonderfully organic moment right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm, you know, tr trying to, trying to get, um, uh, I had to get my med check done and my doc, my doc, not even doctor, she's a, uh, APRN. What yeah. is it? The nurse practitioner. Yes. Right. So she's over here playing God with my, with my prescriptions, just changing shit at will. Right. And I've got, I got a best, my, 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 one of my younger brothers, uh, corporate um a corporate federal job in the pharmaceutical world right mm -hmm. used to be retail uh, walgreens pharmacies a pharmacist doctor pharmacology uh wildly successful highly credited right and he tells me the backstory of how shit actually gets approved mm. and it's simply about how it's coded and written in the office right so we i have my med check yesterday and she says how you know the typical howard it's it's from my methylphenidate my smart medicine and she says oh how, how how are you sleeping? How are the, how are the, you know, this is the regular shit, right? Asking all the probing type questions. And I was like, well, I'm sleeping fine for being, you know, I'm at my, my fucking mom's house. It's fantastic. I'm trying to get this done and that done. Like, you know, it's just great. It's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. So like I throw in a joke about gaining weight. Um, and, and her, and you know what this motherfucker said to me? No. Oh, not, it wasn't Ozempic, but she goes, uh, because they had to change my, uh, the prescription to be a lesser uh, quantity, uh -huh. not, not a dose, but, but a quantity, uh -huh. right? Because they're cracking down. Maybe that's true, but it, I, for not from what I understand. Anyway, so she said, have you ever tried, I'm a methylphenidate, it's a, a generic form of Ritalin, right? Mm -hmm. She goes, have you ever tried Vyvanse? Oh, God. I was like, no, like, no. You know, I don't really want to fix what ain't broken, but you know, why do you, what do you mean? Why do you say that? She goes, well, cause Vyvanse is really for, you know, it's really has been shown to help with weight loss <gasps> and you only have to take it once a day. Now <laughs> it took everything I had to keep a straight oh face. And immediately the first thing I thought was, okay, you heard me say one tidbit about weight loss and you thought that you can get two birds with one stone by prescribing me a new medication that really is a one time a day instead of a three time a day med, which would satisfy your criteria at your job, making you take less heat when you get audited, both for you and the pharmacy. And you probably get some commission rates kicked back if you get somebody else on the Vyvanse. And you're gonna use that, <sighs> the thing I said about weight loss, um, and try to like reverse psychology my ass and make it seem like it's my idea. Like that sales tactic is really cute if you're like in fourth grade <laughs> and you want an extra popsicle after dinner. Right. Who the 
fuck do you think you're dealing oh, with? Oh my God, what'd you say? I said, well, honestly, I don't want to break what's, I don't want to fix what's already, uh, you know, not, not broken. You people pulled a rug out from under me, number one. Fine, I'll deal with it. It's fine. It was a nice check for me to get my mental status back together, to, to reorganize my day and, and what I need to attack day in and day out. Da, da, da. I said, the weight loss is really more of a joke. I, I'm a healthcare pro. I just need to not <laughs> eat the junk. But honestly, I've, it's been a hell of a ride. I've, I've really learned about some new candies and shit. Like, <laughs> I've loved every hook and stub of it. Uh, so if I'm going to lose weight, the only pill I need to swallow is accountability. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish I was in that room. That's it. <laughs> That's awfully cute that you think I don't see what you're trying oh to God. do. I'm going to let you believe that. That <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not even going to let shed light on the fact that that was almost obscene. You should send her the Ozempic podcast. I don't know why. <laughs> sheep don't tend to the issues of, or, or lion don't tend to the issues of sheep. Jeez. Fuck out of here. I'm, no, but, but so, um, I, I don't think. Well, and I think that's a, that's, that's a slippery slope, right? You go to your doctor and you say, I don't know where to start. And that's the first thing they do before you even say you don't know where to start. Hey, you know, I'm watching it and I, people tell me this all the time. I went to the doctor today and they said, oh, your weight is really climbing up there. Have you ever mm -hmm. considered this, this or that? And okay, uh, you know, and so and what so, you ask is, has the doctor asked you what's your exercise regimen like? Yes. And I have these conversations with clients all the time because they know our view on this and they agree with us. That's why they're here. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they they come in more like, oh, my God, guess what my doctor said to me today? Like, guess what happened to me at the doctor yesterday? And these are stories that I hear from people like weekly, at least. And I, it's it's such a hard thing because people and the other thing we were thinking about when coming up with these topics is all these questions I'm seeing on Facebook groups every single day um, about where to start. And some people are like, you know, I used to be really good. And I just fell off. But some people are like, I truly just don't know what to do. I know that I'm in this terrible place that I hate. I hate myself every single day. They post anonymously because they're so embarrassed about where they're at. But they're like, I just can't. I don't know where to go. And, and you see this and you see this yeah. and you see this and you see this and you can't, you have all these options, all these things being thrown at you. Then you go to the doctor and the first thing they tell you is to take this pill or get a shot. So it's like, how do you rectify that? Where do you go to like find these, these things? And, and what we were talking about in what, in, I think it was episode one today of this uh, uh, unfiltered 15 minute deal. And we've talked about this in, in past podcasts, but it was that John C. Maxwell idea of your reasons for change. And that I, I like that when I asked you this question, the first thing you, you said was, well, you need to understand where this change is coming from, like where this this idea that you need to figure something out is coming from. Because what did he say? He said thing you change in four different seasons, right? Mm -hmm. One of them is when you hurt enough that you have to, right? Mm -hmm. If you want it, what was the second one? Dang it. I don't remember them now. I wrote it down yesterday. Um, there it is. When you, when you want enough that you, or when you hurt enough that you have to, yep. when you see enough that you're inspired to. Inspired, not motivated. Right. <laughs> when you want it enough that or mm, i forget the one enough but when you receive enough that you're able to mm. oh when you want it enough that you learn to mm -hmm. okay that was i just made a huge mess of that but That's the first one drive. was when you hurt enough that you have to so that comes back into do i want to be thin or am i so sick of feeling fat right that perspective well, no, that, that goes to where you that's the moment where you realized something needs to change yes um see enough to be inspired to and like you said, that's not motivation. You have to seek inspiration. Inspiration doesn't usually just like fall in your lap. You have to go out and find it. When you, when you learn enough that you want to, 
Okay. So again, you going out there doing the research and realizing like, shoot, maybe I can actually do this. That is something that I want to do. I want to, we mean want to do the work, right? Not want to experience the trophy. Exactly. The you learn it's going to take strength training. It's going to take this. It's going to take cleaning up my diet. And you're like, Discipline. okay, I, I want to do this, right. right? I want to put in this work. And when you receive enough that you're able to, and this one kind of stuck with me at first when I was thinking through this topic, I'm like, okay, well, receive enough that you're able to. Listen, you can receive things from anywhere. Join our mailing list, for goodness sake. Follow yep. us on Instagram. Yep. We're giving you free perspective, mm -hmm. free content, free workouts, free recipes all the time. You can, and that's just us. Mm -hmm. The internet is huge. So to, to say that you can't receive enough, that you can't, that, 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 that to say that you don't know how that's insane to me, there yeah. are so yeah. many things out there that you can get that will make you able to do it. Right. And yeah. I say that, like, I've not always been a trainer, right. When I, I didn't, the only sport I played was bowling. I told somebody that this morning, she goes, is that a sport or is that like a game? <laughs> I was like, it's true. But I didn't set foot in a gym till I was almost 20 years old. I had no idea what I was doing and I had to figure it out. You know, I had to go out there and and take what I could from the people around me who knew that what they were doing from the magazines on the shelves. The Internet fitness was not a huge thing back then. But being I had to go out and find the things so that I was able to do it. And I did. What was your aha moment, though? I was standing in a mirror one day and I was looking at myself like, and this was day after day after day, like, God, this is so disgusting. And I hate being in this place. I can't stand to look at myself like this. And it was, I, I'd be driving in my car. I remember I was driving down Book Road in Naperville one day and I was thinking to myself. That's where rich people live. <laughs> God damn. I was thinking to myself <laughs> one day. I'm just saying because I, I remember this exact moment and where I was and what I was doing. I was sitting in my little Chevy Cavalier and I was thinking to myself, uh, it's not a rich car though. I know it wasn't. Okay. And I crank windows and everything. But I was thinking to myself, why if I would have started any of the 15 times I would have told myself I was gonna start, I'd be somewhere really fucking good right yeah, now. Man. And instead I'm sitting in this car, driving down the road, thinking about how much I hate where I'm at. Yeah. We, and we, so we we had that example too in another cast where if you're looking at yourself, put yourself 10 years from now or mm -hmm. five years from now or a year from now and say, mm -hmm. Is this the moment you're going to look back on and say, I'm so glad I started when I did? Yes. And so after that moment, I was standing in a mirror. It, was, it happened to be around New Year's, which I kind of hate that about my story, but it did happen to be around New Year's. And I thought to myself, like, OK, well, look, I can do something about this. Clearly, I did this to myself because this is not where I was three years ago. You know, I've gained 50 pounds out of nowhere just because I felt like it, you know. Mm -hmm. So if I could do this to myself, I could go the other way. I just I need to do something. And and so when I was thinking through this and thinking of all the things you could go out there and receive in order to be able to do it, then I started going, OK, well, there are things that have to come before that. And for me, it was that hurt. Mm -hmm. I hurt so bad that yeah. I had to do something. And that hurt where I had to do something led to me seeing things to be inspired. And for me back then, it was Jamie Eason. Remember Jamie Eason, the fitness model? Do you, did you know who she is? Or Jesse Hilgenberg? It was right at the beginning when fitness. <laughs> They actually aren't <laughs> anyway, but they 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 were like some of the first like female fitness models that were on the front of magazines that had muscle that I'm weren't just Suzanne like Summers kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> That's some old <laughs> shit right there. <laughs> but, well, I'm too young for that, so this, <laughs> this is in my day. Anyway, of on. young people. In any case, I, I saw the muscle on these women and I was like, damn, that looks cool. I want to look like that. You know, so first I had to hurt enough and know like, shoot, this sucks and I need to do something about it. I saw enough that I was like, damn, that is what I want to be. That's where I want to go. And from there, I had to learn enough that I wanted to actually and, and understand that I wanted to do that work. They're telling me it's going to take five days a week in the gym doing you know, basically bodybuilding type supersets, this and that. I was mm -hmm. like, this is great. I started doing it. I loved it. I fell in love with it almost immediately, the strength training. And and so I learned enough of what I had to do. And, and I started doing the strength training. And then I kind of hit a stop and realized I had to get into the nutrition. But I, I wanted to do that the more I learned because I understood that was the next step to get to where I was inspired to be. 
because you just got started and, and I, you oh, built the plane in the air. Mm -hmm, yeah. Absolutely. And it is so much like that. I mean, just even last year, the, the beginning of the year, I gained 20 pounds, right? And I was in a place where I was, I had so many things going on in my mind, mostly that it was, it was so hard for me. It, it almost did feel like I was starting over for a minute. It was a moment of like, okay, I feel like I'm doing all the things and nothing's working. But when I look back and I thought about all the things that I wasn't doing or all the extra things that I was doing that I forgot to account for that were causing me to fail over and over and over again, you know, you, and then I had another moment almost exactly like that, where I was standing in the mirror again. And I said, this is so fucking stupid. Like, you know what to do. You do this literally every day. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what to do. The problem, you idiot, is that you're not doing it. You know, all you have to do is stop your bullshit and do it. Yeah, but you have the, you have the awareness now to I say do. that to yourself. Now I do, but only because I went through it the first time but and you're followed not, through. Even still, though, starting over in that context is not, it's a continuation. No, and I wasn't starting over. I felt like I was, but I knew that I wasn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I was still in the gym doing, working out and, you know, doing yeah. stuff, but there were other pieces that were not in line that I knew that I could get in line. I just hadn't, mm -hmm. you know? So I think, and the only reason I it was able to have that perspective though, is because of the last 10, 15 years that started with that one first moment. Yep. So to say, like, I just don't know where to start. Well, you need to find why you need to start before you can figure out where to start. And once you figure out why you need to start and once you can pinpoint that hurt or that want or that need or that inspiration or whatever, you can go out there and find what you need to do it. And whether that's in the form of a personal trainer or buying a program or paying somebody to coach you or just finding the free shit out there, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what it is. You just have to find it and you have to stick to it. So don't use I don't know where to start as a cop out. That is a fucking cop out. To, to infinity and beyond. Unless you're going to say, I, I didn't know where to start. That's why I'm here. Fair yes, enough. absolutely. But, but it, even that's not a cop out because you're searching. You're searching for something to receive, right? If, if you keep saying that I don't, I, I don't know how to find the why mm -hmm. to start. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. I would say then find the why to stop what you're currently doing. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. not just semantics. We're talking about deliberately quitting the bad shit you are making step a step step one towards accountability towards uh putting yourself out there ready to receive the good shit like if you're that motherfucker who's posting anonymously you're not ready mm -hmm. yes oh that is a very good you're point. not ready that's a good point and that's okay if, yes. if that's if you want to do that and you want to you know post anonymously and you want to and we're going way past our time on this yeah one. we are uh, but but if 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 you go if you want to post anonymously and just kind of you know ask the questions out. from the back of the room, okay, cool, fine, okay, hey, you know what? It's better than nothing at all. But if it, if a journey is to embark shortly after or based on the results of that inquiry, mm -hmm. and you started it off with an act of cowardice, the moment the hard time comes, that I don't care how, even if you've planned for it. The type of hard time, adversity, bully, rock in your way shit that comes when it comes in the form of or a byproduct of cowardice or uncertainty or doubt is almost always an immovable object. And you are certainly not an unstoppable force. Right? Justification to pause in a life journey is when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. I took that from Batman. Right? <laughs> and when that happens, you're at an impasse. Pause. Shift directions and take your unstoppable force or take, uh, take your unstoppable force and go in a different direction mm -hmm. so long as it's forward. Yes. And plan it out so there is no immovable object. But if you start this shit with, I don't know, then let's just see if you're just going to trial and test and da 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 you know what I'm saying? I don't mean like trial program. I no, mean, no. you know what I'm saying? You're really going to, yes. you know, you're going to say, I'm going to do it, but you don't really mean it. 
you're going to find along that journey is nothing but immovable objects. And it's easy to go back to that anonymous place at that point because that's how you started it, right? The thing, and and you may have no, and you may you may save yourself mm -hmm. from having the naysayers and the, you know you want to work in silence. You may have no haters that way, <sighs> right? Okay, cool. But you also don't have supporters either. And we need a support system. We all Absolutely. need it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That's a really good point. And if you are putting yourself out there and you still have haters, why are they, why are they in your ear? God. Like, I'll do shit and have people that I know are haters and don't support me. Mm -hmm. I'll put it out there so I know they see me just to put on a show. Yeah, watch this. <laughs> and I wait until I know they're watching, and then I call them out, and then it's just like, I hope I've embarrassed you. Next time, think before you speak against me, bitch. Because I like that shit. That's my fuel. You know what I mean? Yes, I'm, and at some point, like, I'm, I think we've said this before. If you've got no haters, then you're doing something wrong mm -hmm. anyways. You're not doing anything worth doing if everyone's like, good job. Yeah. Because or, or that Facebook thing, uh, it was Instagram or Facebook, there was a reel out there that said, I've got, I posted a picture I posted a picture, got five likes, posted the same picture on my story and got 400 views. And the moral of the story is they, 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 they're always watching even if they don't like you. Yup. And ain't that the truth? Oh my gosh. Or they wouldn't have anything to talk about. Right? So anyways, you can't use ignorance as a cop out. In, in this day and age, that's just a ridiculous that's a way to stay, stay where you're at. Being ignorant and not knowing any better are two completely different things. Ignorance yes. is a choice. Yes. Ignorance means you've ignored something. Mm -hmm. And most often, it's you that you've ignored. 